what's going on guys Alex here Nickens Lawn and Landscape we're going to bid five big commercial properties right now these properties would instantly change my business these they're big um, it's gonna be a lot of money it's mowing everything it's aerating and overseeding it's trimming all the shrubs doing the snow removal doing the leaf removal any kind of tree work or shrub work or anything like that rock mulch anything like that that they have we would be doing so this is a this is a big big opportunity here I don't know what they were paying previously so I could be wasting my time right now and maybe you know I may give them a price and they may look at me like I have five years or something I don't know but I'm gonna give them the price where it would be worth it for me to do and obviously if I get these properties I would be hiring somebody on instantly um, we're already in the process of starting to look for another employee uh, right now. It's just me and my brother, if you're new to the channel. Um, those, those of you who are new, you know who's around. But um, right now, it's just me and my brother. And like I said, these properties would change the game for us for sure. So if we get them, we're going to have to hire somebody. But that's cool. It's just kind of going to speed up the process. So whatever, I'm fine with it. two miles to go, so I'll catch up with you guys when we get there. Alright guys, I'm getting ready to pull up, see my first impressions, see what I think of these places. Hoping that it's really good and really nice and fancy. We shall see. Obviously, I'm not going to take the camera out here, but this is what we got going on here. The freaking putting green right there. Like I said, guys, there's everything here, so I'm going to go check these out. Holy crap, guys. Let me just reel off some numbers for you. I'm super pumped, by the way. That was a very nice property. All right, so shrubs and grasses that need to be trimmed annually. We have 70 large shrubs, which are waist high and bigger. Around here, you really don't get any shrubs that are taller than your shoulders. It's usually between your waist and your chest or below your waist, so that's kind of how I judge them. Uh, waist to pretty much my head is a large shrub, and my waist to the ground is a small shrub. Um, so large shrubs, we have 70, 70 large shrubs. We have 295 small shrubs. We have 438 grasses and lilies. So these are like variegated liriope or like ropey as some people call it. It's called, people, or it's not called, people call it different things in different parts of the country uh, or different parts of the world. Uh, so those, they're all small. They don't have any of the grasses that are, you know, as tall as me, six foot high or anything like that. Uh, they're all small so 400 
138 of those. You gotta mow it weekly, mow, trim, blow weekly. Uh, aerate and seed two times per year. Snow and ice management and leaf removal. So guys, this would be a pretty nice contract. Uh, and this is the first one. So I am extra excited to go check out this next one. This next one is the biggest one. Uh, and I was gonna go to the other three first and do this biggest one last, but I just don't wanna wait. I wanna go check it out. So I'm heading there now. We'll catch up with you when I get there. I had to make a pit stop, I'm kinda hungry. You guys like Arby's? Love Arby's. So good. Curly fries. Quick for those of you guys who are wondering how to bid these type places, I'm just looking around trying to look at some stuff. But um, break it down. You know, you got a huge property like these ones where it's apartment complexes or duplexes or whatever you you know whatever an entrance to a subdivision. Break it down. Chances are there's going to be five, six, seven, eight, ten, twelve, twenty, whatever different sections of grass. Break each section down. I mean. Cut it down to the bare basics and be super simple. How long is it going to take you to mow, trim, and blow per section of grass? You know, you can break it down even further than that, okay? Break each property down into three categories. You have mowing, you have trimming, you have blowing. Break everything completely down, and then when you're done, add it all up, and that's your number. You know, usually, if you do that, you're pretty close. That's how I'll do it on too big of a property. And I remember when I was younger, I would get super overwhelmed with these big type properties too and just like where do you even start just break it down find one section of grass and start right there start there break it down three categories very simple say it takes you 10 minutes 20 minutes to mow that section it's going to take you eight minutes to trim it and it's going to take you four minutes to blow it or something like that whatever break it down totally and then add all these together whenever you're done for however many sections of the property there is for this property i think there's like seven or eight different sections so i could break it down per section add them all up at the end and when you know how much you charge per hour there you go it's going to take you say four hours to do it and you charge 75 bucks an hour when you're mowing roughly or that's what you bid it at okay there you go 300 bucks you know something like that now these aren't my numbers i'm just throwing numbers out there this has nothing to do with this property or whatever but i'm just giving you guys a generalization when you're bidding that is a great way to do it if you're overwhelmed and if you feel like you're in over your head because chances are you're not you just feel like it when you look at a huge property you instantly get overwhelmed don't do that break it down make it very simple chances are you're making it way bigger than it needs to be that one was very straightforward guys there was 200 257 total shrubs they're all waist higher shorter and there was 12 grasses and there should be quite a bit of mulch but it's real easy access very easy to spread it's like six foot sections basically in front of the buildings all the way down so pretty big property it's going to be about four and a half acres of mowing i think is what it comes out to be uh, and then trimming all those shrubs air raiding it doing all that good stuff snow removal 
right guys, so instead of just talking about it, I wanted to show you a property and kind of show you how we look at them. Um, first off, you can find these kind of images, findlotsize.com. I'll leave a link in the description and I'll pop it up right here. This website will help you figure out your square footage. It works great for fertilizing, it works good for mowing, it works good for snow, for parking lots and stuff like that. Um, this property is not very big, but you can see what I'm talking about. And whenever I was talking about splitting it up, if you're kind of confused or if it feels like it's too much, so split it up. You know, draw a line right here, draw a line right here, and figure up this front as its own. And then you can figure this strip and this strip as its own, maybe, and then figure the back there too. So then you have three sections and you can add those three sections together. And this here is the property that I was just at, I was talking about, the big one. Um, as you can see, it is pretty big. And there's eight buildings all together. There's a bunch of sidewalks in the front up to every door. Uh, I think there's eight sidewalks in front of each building. So a lot of that going on. You have a lot of edging, a lot of weed eating here, um, and just a lot of mowing overall. But again, this can get overwhelming. So you could figure this, you know, figure each building. Just look at one section. Okay, how much is that? And then you can, you know, roughly multiply that by eight and you're kind of close. Or you could figure, you know, for this one, I would probably suggest more of figuring something like this. Draw a line right here. Figure this is one section. And then draw a line back here. Figure this side is one section and figure this side is one section. You could kind of do it that way and that would give you, you know, a pretty solid number either way. Or do a couple different, you know, if you're new to it, do a couple different methods and see how it comes out, see what you think. It's all about personal preference on these, but, you know, there's, there's a lot of different methods you can use and everybody's method is a little bit different. So use what works for you, but findlotsize.com does work great for this kind of stuff and you can get pretty accurate square footage by using that website. We've now looked at all the locations and properly went over everything that would need to be done. We have our numbers. It's time to deliver them. Oh, it's time. I don't know how I feel about this. I'm excited, but I'm also nervous at the same time. They didn't give me any numbers to go off of. So all of my numbers are totally, totally new. Um, so I have no idea what they were paying last year, what they're expecting to see these numbers at. I'm hoping I'm right there. Uh, I win a lot of my bids, I feel like, on this kind of stuff, just because the, how am I trying to say this, the number of people that are able to service these kind of contracts is very slim, and I think people get nervous whenever they try to hire someone for something big like this and they don't trust them. Um, so that's why I've done everything that I'm supposed to do. I don't, you know, I don't ever say I'm going to do something if I don't do it or if I don't 100% intend to do it. Obviously, things come up, things happen. You're not a perfect person. You're not a robot. But you got to do what you say you're going to do, and that comes down to these bids. It comes down to showing up when you're supposed to show up, looking professional. You know, I didn't put a suit on, but I look, I'm clean. I look decent. I'm ready to have a conversation about their property. I made a list of a couple of things that I think they need to do. Um, saw a couple of dead shrubs. I saw a tree that had been uprooted, a small landscape tree, but it's just laying on its side of the landscape bed. Um, they didn't mention mulch. I saw some areas that needed to be mulched. I saw some low rock in areas where the weed barrier was showing. So these are things that I'm going to mention, not as an upso, but as a, hey, look, I'm paying attention to your property. I'm not some fly-by-night guy. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm looking for. And here's what I saw. And just kind of see how they take that. So basically by me doing that, I'm going to look at his face, his or her face. I think it's a man. I'm not positive. But uh, I was talking to uh, to one of his lawyers, but I'm going to meet the owner now. So I think it's a guy. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to look at his face whenever I say those things. And he's either going to look at me like, okay, dude, you're trying to upsell me. Or he's going to look at me like, okay, dude care about these properties and I want to work with you so I'm going to use that tactic and like I said they didn't ask for any of these they didn't ask for me to look for stuff they didn't ask for any of this stuff but I'm going to give him my prices and then I'm going to say hey oh and by the way I saw this stuff I don't have a price on it but if you want me to get a price on it I'll get a price on it just like I said to show them that I'm paying attention to the whole property not just the work that he wants me to do that I'm caring for the overall well-being of this property and by doing that kind of stuff I honestly think even if I'm not the low bid if I'm if I'm in somewhere in the middle you know I don't you don't want to be the high bid like everyone says and you don't want to be the low bid you want to be somewhere in the middle and I think that's right where I'm at so I hope by me doing this stuff and by me taking the little extra initiative I'm like I say going to mention these things to him I'm hoping that I fall in the middle of the pack and that that just kind of locks me in go here and see what happens. Okay, now I'm getting nervous. About five minutes away or so, something like that. I can feel it in my knees. I mean, these properties aren't the end of the world big. They're, they're big to me. 
having to hire someone and, and that part of it that I'm nervous about than getting these properties. It's going to make us quite a bit bigger and it's adding stuff to our route, and especially in the fall, having to aerate all these places and having to trim all the shrubs and do the mulch and stuff. I don't know if we'll do the mulch in the spring or the fall, but either way, those type of areas is where it's going to add more than the snow removal would be great too, obviously. Um, but those areas are going to add way more than the mowing. The mowing side is probably going to add four hours, five hours, somewhere in there is what I'm thinking. Um, it's all right on our route, so we wouldn't be doing these as their own route. It would just kind of get hit as we're moving along our other route. So we'd just basically be tossing one in here and one in there. It would definitely change the game for us. It'd be cool. Like I said, uh, I just, I don't know. Who knows? I mean, I could be wasting all my time right now driving up here, putting all that together, <clears throat> spending all day Saturday going to look at these properties. Could have wasted my time, but I also could have gained a 10-year customer with all these properties, so you never know. And who knows? They may have 15 more properties, and they're just giving me a test on these five. That's how a lot of these big companies do it. They're not going to get put all their eggs in one basket right away. They're going to test you out, make sure you're good. So I've heard of people being used for five years, and then all of a sudden someone comes up to them and says, hey, I got 25 properties I want you to go look at. You just kind of put your hands up, and they're like, are you serious? But that's, that happens. They have to trust you. This property management stuff is a big deal, guys. That's the first thing everyone sees when they pull up to their apartment complex, when they pull up to their duplex, their town home, whatever you want to call it, their rented house or their commercial building for work or their business. They want to see that stuff nice. If it doesn't look nice, people don't want to stop. You know, it's kind of common sense, I guess, in a way, but it's a thing that a lot of people take for granted and a lot of people don't take advantage of how cheap it is to have a professional company maintain your property as opposed to doing it yourself and buying your own equipment. It's really not that expensive in the grand scheme of things, especially if you're a business and you're bringing in money. Uh, it's not that, not that expensive and it makes a big difference when your property looks really nice and upkept and tidy on the outside. So I think it's a win-win for commercial clients and lawn care landscape people um, as long as everyone's being treated fairly. I know a lot of the commercial stuff is just super, super cheap. It's that pyramid effect where the higher you get, the less people there are to do the job. So you've got a lot less people bidding on these expensive jobs and the people that are bidding on the expensive jobs are the people that are smart and have been doing this for a long time and they know what they're doing, they know what they're bidding, they're not going to underbid stuff. I may have just made an amazing contact guys oh yeah that went extra well they looked over all the numbers and he was looking at the papers and he was like okay looks good he's like everything looks good to me we'll talk it over with our owners we grow by roughly two properties per year so basically saying expect more work and we just want somebody that we can trust. He said, we've had crappy companies in the past. They had this property, guys, that's got sidewalks in front of every building, okay? It's a lot of weed eating, don't let me get you wrong, but it's a $350 a week property, okay? So this property, they sprayed Roundup in front of every single complex on, on everywhere that touched sidewalk, everywhere that should have been edged with an edger or a weed eater, which we'll probably just use a weed eater, may use an edger, I don't know figure that out when we get there but they sprayed roundup along all these edges so you have six inches off and the guy was saying that they had people come to take pictures of the buildings to try to get people to come rent you know whatever for their advertising the apartment complexes and they wouldn't take pictures of the front of the building because of those edges so this is like super 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 sloppy guys this is horrible horrible stuff but I think it's gonna work out awesome for us I am extra happy Oh, this is great. I'll be following up with you guys when I hear more back. He said they had to send it to the owner, but they want a contract signed within the next two weeks. So I think the latest I would hear something is the beginning of next week, but I honestly expect to hear something within the next day or two. So it's not very much information to go over. It's just gonna be a matter of when the owner can sit down and look at it. So like I said, I will follow up with you guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you have an opportunity like this in your business. And if it hasn't happened yet, don't get discouraged. I've been in business, this is my sixth year now, and this is the biggest thing that's ever come across my plate as far as one set of properties. So, or through one person, I should say. Um, 
I've got bigger properties than what I'm bidding here. So it's taken me a while. Don't get discouraged. Like I said, just stay out there. Stay looking for this kind of stuff. Keep passing cards out. Keep putting your name out there. And most importantly, guys, do good work. That will grow your business bigger than anything. That will make people's mouths do this. And when people's mouths do this, you can do this, guys. When they're talking good about you, that is the best advertisement you are ever going to get. I've never spent that much money on advertising. I've always relied on word of mouth and I've always relied on my work. And it has worked out very well for me. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to check us out on Instagram. Be sure to check us out on Facebook. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought. And if you're not a subscriber, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one.